relationship with Skylar Lex and his company today? In my career, I've been blessed to work with some really great people and to have people become genuine friends, and Skylar Lex is one of those people. I mean, we met many years ago when he had in his hands two great artists, uh, Cece Peniston, who went on to become a real dance diva uh, with her hit Finally and subsequent hits, and a rap artist uh, where Cece had sung background vocals, uh, vocals uh, called The Overweight Pooch. And uh, Skyler uh, had thought of coming to A and M uh, as he was shopping uh, for a record deal, and uh, found his way uh, to my office. Uh, I understand that the decision to come to A and M was made on a Sunday, which is great, very holy day, you know, for many people, uh, the day of inspiration. But uh, you know, we, we were able to sign both artists and uh, my coworker Manny Lehman, uh, who was was very passionate, uh, loved the pooch, but heard Cece singing in the background of the Pooch single. And and he said to me, uh, ooh, she's fierce. <laughs> and I said, she is. Can I go to Phoenix and find out who she is? I said, yes, I called Skylar, find out. And Manny took the trip and and, uh, and, and met Cece. And so, but, but it would have never happened without uh, without Sky and uh, our colleague Dave Moss, who was at Profile Records, um, that signed DJ Quick and a lot of Hit, hit yeah, artists, yeah. but uh, David tried to sign uh, Overweight Pooch and CC and couldn't get it past the powers that be for one reason or another. And uh, they found their way, and Sky found his way over to AM, uh, and the rest is history. And then more recently, um, Sky and I, uh, hook, uh, Skyler and I, hooked back up uh, uh, to, to, to talk about some artists that I heard that he was working with. And just a few weeks ago, he invited me into Paramount Recording Studio to a session that just blew me away. A young artist he's making for a major label, young female artist where he was producing her lead vocals and cutting horns all in the same night. And I, I have to just spend a minute on what makes a great producer. And watching him that night, I knew it was true, but I hadn't been in a session with him uh, for a while. And to see him, you know, first doing the horns and coaxing the horn performances out of those guys working so hard for probably three solid hours and creating the arrangements on the spot, you know, changing the arrangements, you know, sense of humor, um, fun, always professional and always very directed always on and, and, and able to inspire the artist to keep giving more and getting better performances out of them before they finally had to walk away exhausted <laughs> and later in the evening uh, uh, producing the, this young singer's uh, uh, vocals with her mom in the room might not have necessarily been easy for Sky or, or for the or for the daughter but uh, you know being a vocal producer is the only thing that really to me defines a producer you know a, a, you know and you and, uh, if, if, if the singer doesn't deliver, what record do you have with Robert Plant, with anybody, Lady Gaga? I mean, the productions all matter. Michael Jackson, Elvis. But, you know, it's who the singer is. It's the Beatles, Elton, it's all the vocals, you know. And I saw him do what I knew he had done before, which was uh, be a great vocal producer. And that's a hard thing to find. So I'm really honored to, to be back working with him. And we're going to find the right artists to collaborate on, which is exciting. Yeah, that yeah. is very exciting. Yeah.